Today's unfiltered guest is a lady who has been destined to take the world of country music by storm, and that she has done. In the past couple of years, she has rose to stardom in the country music scene and has a viewing audience of 1.3 million, all while winning multiple music awards. It's the fabulous Cleona Hagen. Thank you, Sergi, and delighted to be here. You're so good. Cleona, tell us how you actually got into country music. Um, I actually started when I was about uh, 10. I always would have loved singing around the house and really, really annoyed my two older sisters, which just really brought me such joy back at that time. But um, in all seriousness, I just love singing. And all throughout my school, I plays, I've done every one of those. And then I suppose it was back in 2015. And um, before that, I was singing classical music. But I always would have sang country music in our house. It always would have been on. And did somebody else in your house like were they a singer were they playing it in the background yeah my two older sisters they're fabulous singers and um they had their own band as well at the time and they would have done like some pop music rock music and of course country music too so um it was great to see them when i was growing up too and listen to their beautiful voices the eldest Teresa, she has got a kind of celtic tratty voice and nicole she's a beautiful country voice so um it was great that um sometimes i would go out and sing with them as well and kind of I suppose learn the craft too and wow. as well get to see that wow I actually really really do enjoy this and where would you be going like where would you and your sisters be going to perform do you know what it would just be venues at the time sometimes it could have been our local pubs or wow. um, there could have been a local dance on sometimes we would have done some university gigs and they would have done you know like their refreshers week whatnot and we would have been the two hour uh, guests performing at it so um yeah. I've got all those like old photos of me and it's like I was only I think about 16 or 17 at the time but the crack we had it was just brilliant Sergi and, and it's I lovely as well so. to look back now and say oh remember that time we done this and yeah. blah 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 but um yeah it, it taught me a lot as well and of course like as you know yourself when you're up and you're speaking in front of people or you're singing in front of people it it takes a, a lot of guts you know and you're you're really exposing yourself to people as well and exposing yourself to expose um, their thoughts or what what they think of you as well yeah. so um, it takes a lot of um, I suppose practice in a way as well to learn how to cope with all that and how to cope with being in stage and holding your nerve somewhat so so like say when you were in school how did you handle those nerves then do you know oh my goodness for me I am always the most nervous performing in front of people I know so oh, yeah. of course back in the day at school like everybody knows everybody so I suppose in my head, I just kept trying to pretend everybody wasn't there, even though I could see them. But I'm um, concentrate on the words, I, I suppose, at that point more so and just give it a go. And the older I got, the more I came to realize that it's OK that if you make a mistake, you know, everybody's only human. And I made a lot of mistakes and I still do, but <laughs> For sure. everyone's so forgiven. But yeah, back then it was it was even more nerve wracking than, than it would be now. Yeah. And like when you're saying mistakes there, like do you ever remember like making a mistake when you were younger and like somebody being there for you been like, you know, it's okay, Cleona, like, or who was there to comfort you when you did make mistakes? I remember um, I was performing in front of my whole school. It, it, there was some event and they were giving out awards and whatnot. <laughs> They, they called me up to sing and you had to walk up four steps. And of course, just as I was walking up those steps, didn't I miss the very last step, walking up the stairs and I fell in the pile. Oh, no. So of course, the whole assembly hall and all the years, well, they got a good giggle. My <laughs> face was bright red. And then, of course, on top of that, I had to go and sing. Uh, but afterwards, uh, my sister, Nicole, was there and she was like, don't be worrying about it. You were great. And my friends at the time. But um, as for now, of course, I've got my husband, Simon, and um, his brothers, they play music with me as well. So it's great that I've got um, a real family unit as well and people that I really trust because it's, it's so important. You need that. You need that kind of safety mechanism around you as well. So yeah. I'm lucky to have that for sure. Oh, and I love that you've brought that in about like having like a family unit around you. And I know we spoke about this earlier, but it's so important no matter what you're doing, no matter what industry that you're doing, that you literally have really good people around you because as you say, you are going to make mistakes. For sure. And you know what, like, and I, it's so good because like you can really see social media. I know it's got its flaws, but it's got its ups as well. And there's so many people nowadays, you know, speaking out in so many topics and yeah. saying, you know, everything is not picture perfect. Like yeah. you may see on social media. And 
I love that and I lo- love that raw authenticity that people really really show themselves and um as I just think that it's really helped me as well as a performer just to be a little bit more kinder to myself if that does happen and it's it's especially with younger girls and boys coming up now singing music or, or doing any form of entertainment or putting themselves out there on social media not that I don't uh give a shit you're allowed <laughs> to say it. that you're allowed to say it on unfiltered <laughs> <laughs> about what people think I th- you always do but I think um you have a better way of coping the older you get and again it's about surrounding yourself with the right people too it's so important I think so and like when you were in school did you surround yourself like say in primary school did you surround yourself with really good people or what were your friends like in school because so many times it happens like you hear people saying oh I still have my friends from primary school or you move on and you know fr- uh, friendship breakups is a big thing on social media now and yeah. I think it's so important to talk about that kind of relationship with friends so like do you still have your friends from primary school or what way did that pan not out? primary school um I did move well it was only 15 mile down the road but I did move um school when I was coming into primary six I'm not sure what year that is down south so it was only about 11 okay. so I was coming into my last year um of primary school and we moved to a new school and that transition was quite hard as well because of course you have all your wee friends from when you were younger but um um, I, I did keep my friends in secondary school. They're so lovely. I don't get to see them as much. Obviously, life goes on for everybody. But um, uh, I honestly, me and our my friends, we were like the little geeks in the school. Like I was yeah. so painfully quiet. Okay. I, it's not, and everybody always, you know, they're like, how can you be quiet and get up and sing and do that? But I was like awkwardly shy. Like I was the kid that if a teacher would be like, Cleona, what's the answer to that? I would just like, break out in a sweat and I'd be like oh my god you know this yeah. is just awful or I'd always keep my head down don't look at me yeah. but um I, I don't know how the transition came that I was able to go up on stage and somewhat you know expose myself I don't yeah. even know if that's correct word but you know what I mean but maybe it was your way of expressing yourself because if you weren't speaking that maybe that I always find like that happens quite a lot with musicians they seem to be very quiet but yeah. then this is how they express themselves is on stage yeah express themselves that's yeah. it for sure and I suppose I created somewhat of a persona that of course okay this is Cleona the singer I'm now on stage yeah. and um but yeah I was a very very shy shy child and teenager I was kind of getting out of myself and when I hit about 17 18 then I was able to well at least have a conversation with people you know? <laughs> <laughs> I sound like such a, a weird person but um no it was yeah I was just a, a painfully shy kid but I think music really helped me as well come out of myself and um just be the best person I suppose I could be and who do you think like who was in your life that brought that out in you like brought you out to feel safe to express yourself I had an unbelievable music teacher in secondary school um actually three of them and uh her name was Mrs Dinsmore and she actually passed away when I was nearly at the end of my school years and she gave me so much courage she was like Cleona you can do this don't be afraid and um if you forget your words don't worry but she was always so motivating she was always so positive and we were talking about that earlier it's so important to surround yourself with people with the correct energy and yeah. she just really had my back and I suppose as well when you're trying to figure out who you are as a person you need somebody like that that's going to be like yeah. go for it don't worry if you fall flat in your face which I did um <laughs> <laughs> but just keep going and she she definitely helped me in my early years you know really really not be afraid I suppose for yeah. sure I love that you had her because you just I always think like you never know where you would be if you didn't have some people in your life that have believed just, in you yeah, yeah they yeah. just really believed in you like it's so important that you have people like that and you're like that's so lovely that you did oh, have someone yeah, like her amazing and were your friends supportive in school with your singing oh. or were they sporty what was no, they were, they were definitely, they, no, they, they didn't do any music, but um, they were so supportive of my singing and they were, they were just lovely girls and any time that I would have been doing the school plays, they would have went to see me at, you know, because our yeah. school plays in Cookstown school were huge. They were like in that part of the country in Tyrone. They were massive and people from all over would have come wow. to see the plays. Like there was so much work and actual behind the scenes and production went into it. It was nearly 
nearly as good nearly <laughs> as a West End <laughs> for kids at the time you know so um yeah they were pretty legendary and my friends always would have came out and supported me and you know even paid in to to see it to see me and that that me- meant so much and you know they've always been texting me my like friend Claire McKelly and she would always would have you know sent a message and said oh well done I've seen you and such and such and even though you don't get I don't get to see them as much as I would love to um it's lovely to see that they still have you still have that support all these years later which is pretty cool yeah so like do you I know everyone like moves on and they get older and they like life just gets busy but would you like to have like obviously your life is very different than your friends I can imagine and you're all constantly on the road I'm sure they're just as busy but it's it is just a completely different life that's it it yeah. really really is so would you like to have more like do you find it tough to have friendships because you're on the road I know you have I definitely do think it affects friendships there's no doubt about it because we are passing ships basically they're working you know Monday to Friday and I'm working basically the weekends and night time so you don't get their free time is my work time so um you know when I was growing up and you know I was gigging or out and about you just don't get to have I suppose those experiences with your friends and as other friends would have and I would have heard them talking about oh wasn't that a great night and blah 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 and of course I missed out on that however on the other side of the token um I couldn't be more grateful for my job because it is what I love to do and I never took that for granted and unfortunately it's just one of those things is that I had to give up some of those experiences with my friends and also not get to see them as much because of my job but I have to say they've always been so understanding and they never ever held that against me and they always included me when they were chatting about things that maybe I wasn't there for so I always really appreciated them for that too so I always felt like one of the group (laughs) okay well that's so lovely that's so important and it's so nice that you did have that you do I feel like musicians sacrifice so much like you miss out on a lot of events a lot of like just hanging out with your friends having friends like solid friendships because you're on the road so much like what was the biggest thing that you had to sacrifice for your career oh oh for my career um I think it would be just those relationships um I suppose progressing probably that bit more um I suppose the time that I get to spend not only with friends but also family you know as well um my family members I don't get to see them as much as I would like to see them and um, that would be the biggest sacrifice is just the time spent and I suppose I n- never got to really many cousins weddings yeah. um you know so again everybody always was so understanding but I always had that little vo- voice inside saying oh, I kind of felt feel bad you know I didn't get to celebrate these monument moments with all my cousins or friends yeah. you know so I suppose that would be probably the biggest sacrifice for, for sure. sure yeah so like when you were starting out social media probably wasn't as big when you first started out right no come here I'm still I just figured out Instagram and then what did they do they bring TikTok I'm like <laughs> what the hell like how am I supposed to navigate TikTok it's like a minefield to me um but when I was starting out uh 2015 the main focus then was probably Facebook. Okay. Yeah, it was just Facebook and then Instagram. Because you have a huge following. Yeah, Facebook and Instagram is great. TikTok, I'm still trying to get going. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's great now. And it's lovely that people want to follow me as well. And um, it's, it's, again, it's social media. Of course, there's highs, there's lows to it. But it's so great for artists yeah. to get their music out nowadays. Um. I know YouTube as well would have been a big thing back in the day, but it yeah. seems like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. So did you always sing or did you have other jobs before you became a singer? Yeah, I actually, um, so during my time at university, I worked in my auntie's crash, and I was in my auntie's crash from when I was about 16 to I was about 23. Wow. And of course, university in between. And then I would have done a bit of singing as well. I, my sisters and I, we would have sang at weddings and, wow. you know, the ceremony part and some evening dues as well. So that was all good. So there was a nice mixture going on when I was growing up. So, okay. oh, and as well, I was, um, mommy always keeps me going. I was made in Manhattan. <laughs> what do you <laughs> For mean? For a while, I was um, cleaning um, hotel rooms and stuff as well uh, in a hotel in Cookstein. And I 
lasted six months um, wow so well done it was better I thought it was only gonna last six weeks and I done that when I was 15 as well so yeah I made a Manhattan and I worked in a crash and sang as well that so, is a, a big yeah. mixture of of, uh, of jobs to have so you went to university did you study you went to study to be a teacher yes I yeah I done music first and then I went to Edinburgh and then I done my PGDE they call it over there so same okay. as PGCE for teaching so. yeah and um yeah it was a great experience and had a lot of fun looking for a meaningful career perhaps you have a natural love for helping others Perhaps you looked after a friend or family member. A career in home care can be very fulfilling. Home Instead have full and part-time positions. Training and support will be provided. Search Home Instead Careers or visit careers.homeinstead.ie. Home Instead, to us it's personal. So how long were you a teacher for then? I was a teacher for three years in total. Yeah, three and years. Do you miss being a teacher? Do you know? Be what? honest, Cleona. Be honest. <laughs> oh, of course, unfiltered with I miss, I miss the kids so much, <laughs> so much. <laughs> no, uh, truth be told, I did enjoy it. However, my first love has always and always will be singing. So I was like, um, I remember sitting down and I was chatting to my mum, and I came back after my years' experience in Edinburgh, and I got a maternity post in Belfast, and I was teaching there. And I remember saying to her, oh my goodness, I just miss singing. And I love country singing. And even though I'd never sang it publicly, you know, within the country scene, um, I really wanted to do that. And she just said, you know what, Cleona, you have nothing to lose. Give it a go. And I said, but like, what about like everybody else? You know, your student loans and all this all yeah. has to be paid. She goes, give it a go. And if it doesn't work, well, at least then, you know, you've no regrets. Yeah. So I always live by that. Never let fear hold you back. Okay. And um, so yeah, and away I went, and and I tried the country singing, and thank the good Lord, I never looked back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But have you always been this ambitious? And like when you were starting out, I like it's suppose it's easy to look back now. Yeah. As you say, everything's after working out. <laughs> but it's easy to look back now and say, do you know look and look how far you've actually came. But at that time when you didn't see how far you could actually go, yeah, how far did you think you'd go? Well, I remember I was pulled over at the side of the motorway one time and I wasn't going too far because I ran out of diesel. And <laughs> it was just, I was like, everything was going wrong. And this was at the very start. And I was like, what am I doing? You know, the, the money is going low and you put so, like, I put so much of my own savings towards that as well. I'd done so much homework in to how can I get into this scene? What do I have to do? I'd done my own singles and everything. And it was just like, wow, all this. And it was only at the start, all this money and hard work and here I am at the side of the road. And I was like, how, how am I going to get any further? But I have to say, you know, I am so thankful, like the work, the graft that I put in and uh, not again, sound in any way arrogant, but I think I am very proud of myself that how well I've done within the scene here in Ireland. And because there is so much hard work, you know, people who come to the shows maybe only assume this is a two-hour show and you're done no it's not there, there's so much that goes into it i think it's a good thing for people nowadays to say you know what yeah i am proud of myself i work my backside off yeah you <laughs> should be though you really really should be <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um it all those and i still remember that time sitting at the side of the road thinking you know what the heck am i doing but um it just makes like how far I've come that much more sweeter it wasn't handed to me and I'm thankful that I worked hard and I got there yeah Do and you, know? you absolutely deserve <laughs> you to you deserve to be so proud of yourself <laughs> and that's such a, a thing I don't think enough of us actually do that yeah uh, because we can be so critical of ourselves totally oh and be God. like I should be here I should be doing this and then to just sit back and be like, do you know what? This is how far I've come without like without losing sight of like where you want to go. Yeah, for sure. You know, and Sergian, I swear to God, I am honestly one of the most critical, hardest people on myself. You know, like yeah, everybody sure. always says, oh, who, who, who do you want to be like or whatnot? You know, I look up to so many people. Yes. And I, I love so many amazing singers, but yeah. I'm always and I've always said this. I'm always in competition with myself. Yeah. Um, competition being that I'm trying to push myself 
I was always so critical and like, Cleona, that's not good enough. Or what was that? What way were you singing this? And what did you say that? I'm the most horrible, critical person. And I thought to myself, you know what? This has to stop. This, this, yeah, I need to give myself a wee bit more self love. Again, not in an arrogant way, but in a way that is good for my own mental health as well. So, um, yeah, I'm, it's not, it's not a bad thing to say you're proud of yourself, especially yeah. when you've achieved something, you know? For sure. I can't help but think when I'm speaking to you, I'm like, I know you're an incredible singer. I know you're an incredibly hard worker. I know your shows are so, so good. And what I'm going to ask you is, and I think it deserves a mention. Now, there could be some women looking at this being like, it's not about how she looked on stage, but your outfits are so incredible. I like and I'm just there going that has to be hard work too like constantly having oh, fabulous outfits don't talk do you know what I mean <laughs> yes it's now like I wouldn't go out in the outfits that I wore on stage right because the outfits I wore on stage are completely like rhinestoned yeah. and I think that's lovely for stage because of course it catches the lights and it, it looks very professional yeah. um but trying to find these rhinestone outfits are beyond difficult and <laughs> something as well like I have to take into consideration as well okay how high is the stage um you know there's so much that you have to do you okay, know okay I didn't know this wise if and even like never thought of heels it. and all that you know there's and not only that I have got a, a pack as well just like the one I'm wearing today uh, behind my jeans that that needs to fit in somewhere too for my in-ear monitor so <laughs> there's a lot of uh, thought goes behind some of the outfits um yeah. they might not look great but um it's, oh it's, they do you're very kind but uh I'm usually just a, a jeans girl I just like throwing on jeans and I'm definitely more of a casual person but on stage of course you have to put on that yeah. little bit of, um, glitz and glam so and it's fun as well to, to oh, dress of course up. <laughs> so what do you do like uh, before I feel like back in the day I definitely would have been like I can't rewear that outfit whereas now I'm like I am so rewearing that I and it's, you. yeah so are you like you don't mind wear rewearing an outfit no I, I was cool. the exact same as you and I was like oh my god no I can't put that on yeah. again like what was my mind thought in that I would wear the same outfit no problem now yeah and I have done now because like some of these the outfits are expensive as well so like and not only that I want to get wear I don't <laughs> make use out of the, of the money I've spent I suppose exactly but, uh, uh yeah I, I love that mentality now that everybody's like yeah I'm gonna wear the same outfit I don't care yeah and I love as well now people are wearing like flats like converse yeah I remember when I was like going to discos no on all like back in the day I, I sound like I'm 100 but like 15 years ago <laughs> I was wearing these heels and there's yeah. some photos of me and they are not flattering I could hardly walk I was like Bambi by the Stilts. end of the night so I'm loving like the real you know the casual vibe. casual vibe yeah for sure that's right up my street oh so <laughs> am I Fiona I know from going to your shows I know from being around um country music fans that they are probably the best fan base that any musician could ever ask for. Tell me about your fans. They're, they're really honestly so supportive. And like yeah. the people that I've met throughout this past eight years, um, they've actually become nearly like friends now yeah. as well because they are taking time out of their day to follow us up and down the country. And um, not only that, we're doing our very first sun holiday, yeah. Sizzle in the Sun, and they're coming the whole way over to Spain now as well. That's so wild. it's like, wow, what lovely people. And I love as well, like, taking time to actually get to know people and seeing you know how where they're from whatnot but now like I've got to meet so many incredible people I'm like oh how's the family doing and how's such and such and oh you were at the last time I was chatting to you you said you were going to meet you know your friend down here how did that go and it's it's lovely the rapport you build up with you know such wonderful I wouldn't even say fans at this point really friends and you don't get that in any other scene other than the Irish country scene because I think any other scenes very um there's always that wall where the performer is only on stage and that's it you sometimes you don't even get a meet and greet bar if you pay another 100 or what uh, oh yeah euro you know and at that there's only a, a limited amount whereas with us within the country scene we would be standing there until the very last person is up to us which could be sometimes an hour an hour and a half later, which, More, yeah. you know, I think that's a real testament to everybody within that scene and that genre of music that, you know, we do care about who comes to see us. We know the value of money and it's lovely that people want to come and see us and support us. And, you know, I, I just think what's there's no harm in going to chat to everybody afterwards and say, thanks a million for coming. Appreciate yeah. it. But have you ever had a, an encounter with a fan like that where they just 
went above and beyond and or done something crazy like has anyone ever tattooed <laughs> you on their body I don't know there's now this he's a lovely lovely man and he's been supporting us for years now. I'm obviously not going to say names so or whatever but um it was actually Christmas time and um we were down at our parents house and um the <laughs> we were all just sitting around and I heard the doorbell going and we were all looking like everybody's here <laughs> who are we missing <laughs> Next thing. Oh no. This man comes in again, I'm not gonna say his name, but yeah. he came in and we we're like, oh hello, how's it going? And did you recognise him then for the shows or no? Oh yeah, I recognised who he was, but I I didn't realise, you know, he knew whereabouts we were where we were at. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. fan knew where you lived. <laughs> I he was so nice to be for and he anyway he came in <laughs> he sat down and um mummy she has this lovely big round table. And anyway, we were all just sitting around the table and of course they pulled up a chair and we're like want a cup of tea what not blah 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 and so we were sitting down and we were just like oh what's your plans for over Christmas and just you know general small chit chat yeah this thing he goes oh Cleona I have something to show you so he perched himself away from the table he started to un <laughs> popped out his willy <laughs> no <laughs> it didn't go that far now <laughs> but no he, he started to unbuckle his belt and he t- taken his, his I've no idea up. where this is going and then all of us like no 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 we were like what the heck is going on here we were like no 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 and he goes no 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 I just have to show you something we were like we don't want to see we don't want to see <laughs> we don't want to see I swear to god we were just like oh, all of us were dumbfounded and the next thing he pulled up his shirt and just he had my logo he and didn't. I mean it was a big massive C logo the belly and- button in the middle <laughs> And the gold around in the big sea. And I was like, and what did I say? I was like, oh my goodness. I was thinking of changing that logo. And oh, I came no. by me before I realised. And I was like, oh my God, Cleona, you are an idiot. What? <laughs> no. And he was like, what? And I was like, oh no, 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 I'm, I'm only joking now. And I didn't after that. because I would have, no, I would have felt you bad. You would have had to get it off what, and got it redone. This was not a tiny tattoo. This was, he was, he was definitely a fan. He went full on big. <laughs> C logo tattoo I was but it was really really funny and shocking at the same time so what were your family thinking well first of all they had a good laugh anyway afterwards because we were like oh my god we didn't no, know what were they like we, when he was there when we, he was there we were like we were like we we're like laughing but shocked and didn't know what to do and then he pulled up and was we your were husband like, there uh, yes Simon was there too and we <laughs> were just god. like oh my god we, we didn't know where to look but we it was such a lovely gesture. I know. It know really what you're was. Saying. And as I said, a little creepy. At the same time, <laughs> <laughs> I said it, not you. It's fine. <laughs> My hands are clean. Um, but it, it was. It was. It was. He's a nice man. Ah, uh, no, I hear what you're saying. I'd say. I'd say it was so but it was mad. An, yeah, it was, it was an interesting evening now, for sure. I can yeah. imagine. So how did it end? Like what? How did it you did, get him out of the house? It. Do you know what? I don't even know how. I think the conversation, it was a bit of a blur afterwards because I think we were really shell-shocked. We were just like, did that just happen? So every yeah. Christmas now, we hear the doorbell. We're just like, could it be? Could it be him? <laughs> <laughs> did he get another tattoo when we update the logo? Oh, oh imagine the day goodness. you do update your logo. Oh, I, do you know, I couldn't. You I, can't do I, it. I, could, and I, I had it out of me because I was thinking of doing it at the time. I was like, I couldn't do you it on the car. Oh, I actually it. went through all that pain for me. Do you know? I was like, no, I can't. I can't. And it was like proper big tattoo. Oh, it was huge. I mean, oh, huge. Yeah. He's branded. Oh my God, fair play. <laughs> he, he got branded uh, by Fiona. Yeah. God love him. So like, <laughs> I always think, so when I was on tour with Foster and Alan, I was by far the youngest person there. And I was dead. Like I was wrecked. <laughs> We got off the flight, the lads were raring to go straight away. And I was like, lads, I'm dead. I need to go to bed. Mm-hmm. And they were just go, go, go. Like there was no stopping them. It Nothing phased them. Now, it was like their 20th time to go over to Australia to tour. But I was like, honestly, I was shocked at the hard work that goes into being on tour. Yeah. And it must be like, it's such an emotional whirlwind in the sense of, you could be jet lagged. You could be just tired from traveling. Like even if it was just driving like from one end of the country to another. That's it. Like, how do you find all of that? It's really, really, really tough. Yes. You know, it really is. And people as well don't realize, just as you said, like, it's not only the being on stage, but it's the journeys. They really kill me. And not only that, the the time of night you're coming home. And it's so dangerous as well. And, like, 
like I've heard of awful like so many awful accidents that have happened at our hour at night as well so it's just like there's been so many times I've had to like pull over and to sleep do you yeah. know what I mean because it's just it wraps you and then of course when you're doing a tour it's consecutive nights so like by the end of it you don't know whether you're up you're down you're round and round and you also have to have that energy as well to be on stage to perform to sing to everybody knows you know the way we were talking about energies earlier yeah. you know if somebody's kind of a little bit down or maybe just no energy you, you know when somebody's up upbeat yeah and you have to give every ounce of your being yeah. to that stage performance and for me anytime like before I go into her I have to make sure that you know I have to have some level of fitness yeah. not only for you know being able to move around on stage but I can't breathe properly and when I can't breathe properly like I can't get through a song and then and that in turn hurts my voice so anytime I might walk in or you know walk and run in I sing out loud oh my so god I, I love like, that working nine to five <gasps> what a way and you know I'm running and running and, like people are looking like I'm not even kidding you I literally I don't care who's there I have to have if I don't do this to get my breathing right I, you know I, I'm I do look and see and I have to I love like, that you do that absolutely crazy <laughs> But yeah, I've got, and singing. I've got some funny looking looks this past while for sure. But come here, I, I have to just keep doing it. You really it's the only do. way that I can ensure that I'm going to be stage ready and ready for tour. Do you know? Oh, that's <laughs> so good. So, what is your pre show rituals? Before you go on stage, what do you religiously do? Okay, so I would always go, mmm, and all these, oh, crazy, crazy, like vocal warm ups. Then I would steam myself, which is basically, um, hot air going through down my throat um sometimes I might have a wee hot whiskey and a honey just depends and then what else would I do sometimes I would jump up and down just to get the blood flowing and that's it then I'd be ready to rock yeah. I literally have to be in my own room because I'm still it's like for me an, an exam I'm still revising everything I'm making sure I know where um okay the solos are for the instrumentation parts and my words and what I'm going to do in between and where I have to be standing so it really is studying for an exam and especially that first few days yeah. until I get into the swing of things and it becomes second nature then I would totally be kind of by myself I like just to be have my own yeah. little space by myself and then yeah. after that then I'm fine when I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with what's happening then I'd yeah. be cool, do you know oh I totally get it and like it's funny because I feel like you often hear when people like meet somebody famous or when they meet somebody that they idolize and they're like oh they're different and I'm like no you have to give them a break like they could be like that if somebody maybe met you just before you went on stage you could be like as you said you're just there revising you're in a different headspace 100%, yeah. than like this exciting thing of like meeting somebody like when you're out doing your meet and greets you're in that yeah headspace. yeah for sure and then like people might get like a, a different impression of him but like oh she wasn't that I'm not saying this happened with you but yeah. it, oh she wasn't that friendly it's like no because she was in the zone yeah she was in a different zone that's so true like that's um that's 100 percent true and so well put as well it yeah. is a zone for sure do you know yeah. and um maybe if say example you're you're trying to think of everything and you're maybe walking through a lobby way and you probably just don't see somebody i know you know some pe people could be like well she hadn't even talked to me you know even I if know. you genuinely it was an honest honest mistake and you didn't see someone you know um it's, it's tough especially when you're starting that tour you really are in that zone and i have to be in a quiet space to yeah to really remember everything and at the end of the day you're doing that for the people coming to see you you know you're doing you want to put on your best performance a lot of famous people are misunderstood because of that people don't realize they're, you're working mm. you're actually working yeah so, like you have to be in the zone again you have to feel comfortable with yeah. how you are presented and how things are before you actually give a performance so you know what i i this conversation you know it's it's actually great that you're highlighting it because i always just like to try and be me yeah. you know i don't want to be like okay i'm going to be this way one time and another way the next because yeah. that is not authentic to me yeah. i just want to be cleona i just want to act as i would sitting here with you or sitting at home you know this is honestly always that. me and just chill and that way I think then if people perceive you wrong then that's on them I totally you know so I love that you said that that was a good answer that was Don't a very me. good answer yeah <laughs> I'm giving myself some pats <laughs> in the back here today <laughs> and you you said there about being chill what do you do to chill oh my god I lie on a pile and watch TV <laughs> and a glass of red do you know what I think because like we're always out all the time and performing I love just 
chillaxing and doing nothing or having nice food at home or even going to a restaurant you know but I am very boring these days I don't like to do anything too mental I wouldn't be going out raving so yeah just relaxing a nice bottle of red and some good food you recently got married to Simon yes um who's also in the music industry yes was that really important uh, to you to be with somebody who was in the industry or was that even an option no like an it, option? it honestly I it never even crossed my mind you know I honestly for a long time always felt like oh I probably won't even marry someone you know I, I just saw it because I was so um concentrating on my music at the time and to trying to get to the place that I wanted to be at and then it just happened so organically after Dancing with the Stars um uh, I approached Simon about creating a band because he's a fabulous musician a drummer singer and um and now did you approach person. you because you fancied him um, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> I stalked him. I'm only joking. <laughs> you knew how to use Instagram then. <laughs> oh, I sure did. <laughs> Into the DM. It's like, hi there. <laughs> you want to meet up? Um, no, so it was just, um, so I rang him and he was like, yeah, sure. Let's, let's do it. And, um, then we created a band and we were honestly just friends at the start of course there was an attraction there you know it'd be silly not to say that but yeah and then it just grew from there and it's just honestly like my best friend I sound so soppy but oh, he's just that. a really lovely person and you know my biggest cheerleader as well and anyone I've been talking to recently always say that like it's so important to have your partner that really really supports you in everything that you do because you're with them all of the time that's it they're that's your life it. partner they have to support you and what you're doing and be behind your dreams and equally you be there for for them and be behind them what they want to do oh and support definitely them. for sure and I, you know I know it doesn't work for everybody like of course we work together and we're, we're pretty much 24 7 with each other however for Simon and I it's it really does work you know yeah. he's like me he's very laid back and we've we're just um just a really good rapport and I'm so thankful for that as well I just I just really just love our lifestyle I love that we get to perform together we have so much in common as well you yeah. know outside of music and it's it's just great to have someone that you can just rely on and that, that really everything else then just falls away you know all the worry all the small things so for it's, sure it's good. it's good yeah and I have to say I absolutely love your song that you recently recorded together you it watched sounds it. better than that I you promise you watched the Beckham movie that, or the, the Beckham oh documentary oh my goodness I did indeed I was like OMG oh my god see I, I should have even got on done that dance for TikTok but of course I didn't yes exactly so <laughs> oh yeah it was cool was, did you watch the, the Beckham documentary and then say do you know what like were you sitting beside each other like everyone else was sitting no. beside each other going we should make a TikTok video whereas you and Simon were sitting beside each other going we need to record that no we already had that video <gasps> and it all in, in the can like it wow. was all completely done it's so weird I was like oh my god is it Dolly's Island in the stream and I was like wow that it was obviously meant to be um so yeah I know we had all that done prior to, to actually that insane. documentary yeah oh <laughs> but it went so great for us like it was honestly the high, highest viewership I've had of any of my videos it was so beautiful it, uh, it was beautifully you. shot it was beautifully sang beauty oh everything was perfection about it have you ever met her no but she did receive my album um Margot sent she'd be friends Margot O'Donnell yeah. would be friends with Dolly Parton That's right. she sent it over to her and Margot rang me up it was actually last year and she says oh um hi Cleona can you talk and I goes I can Margot and she says oh she got the album and I was like who is she on about I was like who got the album she's like Dolly got the album she Dolly Parton got your album yeah as casual as, oh as you can say it and I was like my heart literally stopped I was like what what she got my album what would you think did she hear it did she like it she's like um her assistant went in one monday morning and give give the dolly song big album to her and she was like who's this little girl singing my songs <laughs> oh my god and then of course um the the assistant said this is a girl from ireland her name's Cleona hagan and she put it on and she loved it and that just made my whole birthdays my whole life everything i was just made up I was like if Dolly Parton gives that stamp of approval 
Well, thank you, sweet Jesus. You've done your job and you've done it well. <laughs> oh you. my God, to have Dolly Parton having your album in her hands is insane. I know, absolutely. I couldn't get over it. Margaret was so funny. How she just said it, yeah. She got your album, like, it was yeah. just, oh, you know. And he went down the road down there. Down the road there, got the <laughs> Like, hey. she's like Dolly, she got so, the album. Um, oh, I was just, I was, I was so thankful as well to yeah. Margot for doing that. And but of course, it's just, it made my year. You do a really good impression on Dolly Parton. <laughs> I don't know what she actually says, but you, you might do it for us now. Something about her hair. Like, where'd you get your hair? Or how long did it take you to get your oh, hair yeah, done? So, oh, yeah, yeah. Go on. I do know. So, it. uh, somebody once said to Dolly, "Oh, Dolly, I, I, I love your hair. You know, um, where do you get it done?" And she's like. Well, honey, I don't know, because I'm never there when it's getting done. <laughs> I remember But I have, have an even better one. Okay, on. this one, I just crack up every time I do it. So um, <laughs> Dolly went to the doctors, and, and the doctor said, uh, Dolly, I think, I think you need, need to lose some weight. And, uh, I recommend you start jogging. And Dolly was like, well, doctor, I tried jogging many times, but every time I had to stop. And the doctor was like, why is that, Dolly? She was like, because every single time I jogged, well, I just went ahead and gave myself two big black eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my favorite one of hers, but she's got some incredible sense. You know, she's just oh brilliant. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> if you had one performance that you could do with Dolly Parton, what would it be? Oh, cool. And where? Oh, oh. Uh, Grand Ole Opry, oh, for sure, uh, the iconic place itself, and the coat of many colours, that is, that song, it's my favourite Dolly song, Jesus. I love the words, you know, it's such a beautiful message, and just the whole melody of it, it's really cool, so yeah, yeah definitely coat of many colours. Now, you're a little bit cooler than Dolly, because <laughs> I think you have your own stamp, but I don't think Dolly Parton has her own stamp, is that right? Well, oh yes, I was going to say, like, what, totally about? what about that? <laughs> forget you had your own stamp <laughs> i totally forgot about that yes i got my own stamp with unpost can, can i have it? it i have it yeah the whole collection the whole collection is brilliant so there was um myself margo or sorry myself philomena nathan and big tom so i was so honored when they approached me and said cleona we would love you to be part of unpost stamp and i was like who little old me <laughs> I was like, yes, please. So it was it was a great honor and um a great accolade as well to have and yeah, I can't believe it. It was so weird as Did well. Did you get any was, fan mail coming yes. in the door with your stamps? And then all I could see was my face. I was like, this is so crazy. But it's so funny because right. the stamp that they actually chose, it actually looks like I'm kind of giving the middle of the <laughs> I was like, it's a live act. Did you know that? It? it was like a live you weren't, obviously. Yeah, it was like why did they choose that you all yeah, it was like this year and I was like oh my goodness is it just me or does it look like I'm flipping everybody off oh that is amazing no I think that's really really cool and um, I just noticed then as well the Spice Girls they have actually just See been that. honoured their own stamp yeah. so I'm sorry Dropped there before Dolly then. doesn't have one <laughs> so Cleona Hagen and Spice Girls have their Woo! very own stamp yeah, that's incredible I love it I love it no and I was as I said I was very very honoured and it's it's lovely to have as well look yeah, back on for, for sure. sure Cleona what's next for you well, we are doing my very first sun trip, as I was saying, Sizzle in the Sun, and that's going to be at the end of April in sunny Spain, Huelva, and that's going to be one full week, and wow. your lovely granda as well is coming yeah. out, um, Mick Foster and Alan, and I cannot wait for that, and there's going to be Johnny Brady, there's going to be a host of all amazing artists, not only wow. that, we're going to have dance, and we're going to have lots of games, and it's just going to be one fun week of performances, and sun, wow. and cocktails, of course. Love it. And then we are doing, as I said, the Dolly Songbook Tour, that's kicking off in March, we're going to be up and down the country, we have over 15 dates, and then summer is festivals. It's pretty full on, Can so the next time that? you see me, I will have more grey hair. <laughs> You're so busy. Oh, it's busy. But it's great. It's great for sure. I, I'm loving it. It's, yeah. it's good fun. You you're know. kicking off the new year with an absolute bang and you're going to be absolutely incredible. Leona, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the very thank first you. season of Unfiltered. It was an absolute blast. I loved it. Thank you I so much. I love your honesty. I love your humor. <laughs> you're absolutely brilliant and best luck with everything you do this year. Thank you so much, Sarah Jane. Thank you.